Do you think there are similarities between the Pink Panthers raid and what happened in London over Easter weekend? What are those similarities? Yeah, I mean, there are definitely things that are required for a, an amazingly successful diamond heist. The incredible planning. Um, this must have been planned for a very, very long time. And some of the people that I uh, met and spoke to from the Pink Panthers, they would, you know, they would spend up to a year or, or more casing one particular joint, getting everything prepared, recruiting their team and, um, and, and finding an insider, basically, to, to help you. For those at home who don't know, who were the Pink Panthers? So the Pink Panthers are a sort of loose network of gang members um, who essentially, they do slightly, their, their traditional uh, robbery is slightly different from this. They do tend to do smash and grabs from kind of high-end diamond stores. Um, but what will be similar is the route that the diamonds take once they're out of those uh, safety deposit boxes. Um, so they will be passed to a courier within hours. The courier has to get out of the country or across a border. Um, very, very quickly, and then those diamonds will be taken to a buyer somewhere that will probably be pre-organised uh, and, and often to order. But the haul is estimated to be around two hundred million pounds. I mean, it's one thing to steal diamonds and precious items; it's another to try to sell them on. Um, where do they go? How do they try and sell them? Yeah, I mean, that's the that's the crucial thing. I mean, this this obviously is a raid that is incredibly sophisticated and has taken a huge amount of time. But you could do all of that and still be left with diamonds you can't sell. So you have to have certain contacts or fences. Uh, who will clean the diamonds or at least get them into a, a, a state that they can get onto the black market. So a really big, valuable diamond will probably be recut. It will have uh, its documents forged and it will be put back into the, the, the legal market. And a dealer will sell to a dealer, will sell to a dealer. And by the time you and I are lucky enough to get a diamond, we have no idea that it was one of the stolen ones originally. Um, but... If they're small, they're probably kept on the black market and they become currency for a much wider and a much more uh, sinister kind of crime network. So you want to buy drugs, you want to buy arms, you want to buy people, um, you will very often pay in, in diamonds. Uh, bad news for those people who are watching who have had their belongings stolen from this world. I mean, some of them don't even know yet. In fact, most of them don't even know yet. Um, is there any likelihood that they'll get their possessions back or... Are they going to just have to write them off? As you said, it's such a sophisticated operation, long time in the planning, execution. They seem to have had four days over the Easter weekend to carry it out. I know, amazingly, they had such a long time to, to, to do whatever they wanted, really. Um, it, actually, if you, if you had a really special diamond, I mean, no diamond is, uh, I mean, every diamond is unique. And if you had one that is really special, there are, and it had been graded and it had gone through all the legal channels, all the official channels, then there are chances that it could be found. And that has happened before. You know, something robbed in, in Dubai can be found in, in the markets in New York mm -hmm. and be identified and returned. So that has happened. Um, most of the smaller ones, most of the kind of bulk are, are, are probably just going get, to get lost in the, in the system. Okay, have had a marking. Let's hope that most of those people were insured, but I'm sure there's some items there that they'll see uh, will be deemed to be irreplaceable to people. Okay, mm. interesting to hear from you. Thank you.